Hey guys, Morphologist here with a new tutorial on Space Engineers. I was gonna post this video earlier this week, but because I've been so busy recently, I just haven't had time. But not to worry my fellow engineers, because this past weekend, despite the fact that I was quite busy, I still found time to play some Space Engineers. So this time on my tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you some of the new things that you can do post 1.035 update, and that's extendable arms. Now, you might be thinking, well, Morphologist, this level of engineering is a little bit too above me, and I can't do the math. Well, you know what? Don't worry. I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to even give you some very, very easy formulas to help you make your own extendable arm. But we'll come back to that in a second. First, let's get you started on building your arm. The first step, as always, is to find a place to build your arm. It could be on a ship or on a station. It really doesn't matter. For the first time, let's just understand how to build it. Start by clearing your toolbar of all existing items by right-clicking it and replacing them with the following. A heavy armor block, a small generator, a cockpit if you don't have one already, a rotor, and whatever you want to put on the end of your extendable arm. For me, it's a grinder, but you can make it anything you want. Now let's exit your menu and start building the first part of your arm, which will be the base. Let's start by using your heavy armor block. Place it by left-clicking, then hold Control and drag in the direction that's perpendicular to your platform or ship. The height is not important, but I've made mine 5 just to be safe. Next, it's time to place your rotor. Place your rotor on top of the blocks that you've created. Immediately afterward, place your cockpit, access it, press K, and go to your control panel. Find the rotor that you've just created by typing rotor in the search bar. Select the latest rotor that you've placed and rename it. I'm naming mine to Grinder Extendo, just so I remember. After you've renamed your rotor, we're going to exit from the control panel and go back to the first rotor that you've created and start creating the arms in the fully extended position. Make sure though that you make the arms the same length and that you place the rotor facing the opposite direction of the previous rotor that you've just placed. I will explain later why this is very important. For this extendable arm, it's only going to be three parts long. So that means that the third part, which is the end, is going to have the item that I want to extend out. In my case, it's a grinder. And with that, my arm is now complete. But it's time to come back and start naming these rotors. Otherwise, I'm going to forget which one's which, and I will not be able to set it up to extend like I want it to. A very easy shortcut is placing a terminal on every arm that has a rotor attached. That way, when you access the terminal to rename the rotor like I showed you previously, it will highlight white. The others that are not attached directly to your arm will highlight in different colors. It's important though that when you rename the rotors that you name them according to a number. Otherwise, when you go back and you try to edit these, you'll forget which one's first and which one's last. After you've completed naming both the rotors attached to your first rotor, you're ready to start programming these rotors to make your arm extend. And now, the moment that you've been waiting for. It's time to make your arm actually work. So let's go back to the diagram I made earlier to explain the way these things work. If you need to take a moment now to pause the video, go ahead. But don't worry, I'm going to take a moment to explain each part of this diagram as we go along programming your new extendable arm. Figure 1 shows the arm in its fully extended position, which is how we built the arm. But what we need it to do is for it to retract. And to do that, we need to know what angles to set for it to retract to. Let's first remember though, that if you're spinning the rotor clockwise, it will be a positive degree. If you're spinning it counterclockwise, that is to the left, it will be a negative degree. And that's exactly why I had you alternate the rotors, so that each rotor will be spinning in a positive direction. You'll understand that better in a second. So let's go back into the control panel of your shipper station and shift click all three rotors that you've just created. Before we make any adjustments to the limits, let's set up the braking torque to stop it from flailing around wildly. And then make sure you shut them off, or they might start spinning before you're finished. Lastly, with all of your rotors still selected, let's name them into a group. This can be done by going to the upper right hand corner and typing in a name, and then hitting save. Now we're ready to start setting the limits, but before we do, let's understand first what they mean. The first angle that I'm going to set is the 80 degrees, and then it's going to be 160, because it always goes off of zero 
from where you've started. These degrees represent the limits that I'm going to set for each rotor. So selecting the first rotor, I'm going to drag down the upper limit to around 80. Then I'm going to select the second rotor and drag that to around 160. And finally, the last rotor is going to be the same as the first degree, and that's 80 degrees. Good, now we've set the upper limits, but we still need to set the lower limit so it doesn't overextend and break. So, selecting all three rotors, drag the lower limit all the way to zero. Now, if you want to set it to a different degree because you want to make it smaller, you certainly can. And the formula for that is simply multiplying the first degree you've used by two, and that's going to give you your second angle. And now it's time to set the velocity of your rotors. So select your first and last rotor in your series and set the velocity together to around whatever you like. For me, I'm setting it to 1.5 RPM. But that second arm cannot be the same velocity. Otherwise, you will not be able to achieve that smooth and fluid forward motion that you see in this video. Believe it or not, that formula is surprisingly simple. You just multiply the first RPM by two and you get your second RPM. For me, since my RPM was 1.5 for my first arm, my second has to be three. The arm is complete, but first let's save before we test it just in case. Good, now we're ready to test it. Select the group that you made for your series of rotors. Hit on and behold the glory that is now your new extendable arm. Now all you need to do to extend and retract is simply hit reverse on your rotor group. You don't have to turn it off. The accessory that you've placed at the end of your arm can also be accessed from your control panel. You don't have to place one on the end of your arm. So there you have it guys, you've got your own extendable accessory. Now if you're interested in downloading the map that I've created these items on, you can download it off the Steam Community webpage. A link has also been posted in the video's info, so go ahead and click on that. Now if you enjoyed the tutorial, if you think you'll like to see more, make sure that you comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Oh, and tell your friends too. That's it. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.